Amtrak is best known for its passenger services across the United States. Some notable trains being, inherited or not, are the California Zephyr, Empire Builder, and the Acela Express. Aside from those, the railroad has dabbled in freight and mail service in previous decades. One of those trains was the short-lived Lake Country Limited, a mixed freight and passenger train running from Chicago, Illinois to Janesville, Wisconsin. But the question is, what happened to it? The mid-1990s saw Amtrak struggling financially to operate its trains. Routes like the Montrealer, Desert Wind, and Pioneer had been cut in an attempt to prevent further losses. The Taxpayer Relief Act of 1997 gave Amtrak a $2.3 billion tax refund to resolve their cash crunch. The next year, in 1998, George Warrington became president of Amtrak, determined to make the company self-sufficient financially. I guess the first thing I'd like to do is state emphatically that we at Amtrak, and I personally, I will tell you, I personally and we at Amtrak are absolutely and entirely focused and fixated on achieving the congressional mandate to become operationally self-sufficient in 2003. To do this, Amtrak's network growth strategy was initiated, envisioning a more prominent role transporting mail and express freight traffic. One service that attempted to fulfill this goal was the Lake Country Limited, running out of Chicago, Illinois, 98 miles north to Janesville, Wisconsin. Initially, a route spanning from Chicago to Madison, Wisconsin was planned, but after a June 1998 test train showcased a very expensive rebuild project of track between Fox Lake, Illinois and Madison, Amtrak settled on Janesville as the final stop. Wisconsin and Southern Railroad President Bill Gardner imagined the Lake Country Limited would run as three daily trips between Chicago and Madison using the railroad's own coaches in three car sets. This plan never panned out though. With that said, service finally began on April 15, 2000. Originating out of Chicago Union Station as train 343 in the evening, the train made a stop at Glenville, Illinois and then its final destination of Janesville, Wisconsin. On June 15, 2000, a stop at Zenda, Wisconsin was added to serve the resort town of Lake Geneva. The schedule was then as follows. An 8.20 p.m. departure from Chicago Union Station running over Metro's Milwaukee District North Line to Glenville, Illinois making a stop at 8.42. From there, it continued north through Fox Lake, where track ownership shifted to the Wisconsin and Southern Railroad. Next stop was Zenda, marked as Lake Geneva on timetables, Wisconsin at 9.40, and the final stop was Janesville at 10.50, a two and a half hour trip one way. A return trip to Chicago would be made early the next morning as train 344. A one-way ticket cost $22, but was soon dropped at $15. Weekend trips were slightly quicker due to not having to wait on metro trains as well. Side note. The Zenda, Lake Geneva, and Janesville stations were built especially for the Lake Country Limited, though were really just platforms and parking lots with lights and a shelter at the latter. In terms of the train's consist, it usually consisted of a P32-8 BWH leading the train. However, on occasion, an F40PH or even Genesis locomotive would lead the train and or an F40 converted NPCU would trail at the back to lead the train back to Chicago in the morning. As for rolling stock, a Horizon coach or two was present along with a mix of either a baggage car, express box car, and or road railers. Sometimes an automat food service car would be included as well. This was a self-serve cafe car with vending machines and no attendant to take orders. The train's main goal was to tap into local mail services along with the GMC truck plant and local printing facilities in Janesville moving auto parts and paper respectively. This was to compete with the existing trucking service with Amtrak hoping to provide a cheaper and faster way to move the goods. It also managed to serve limited passenger operations along the route. Typically the train carried an average of 0 to 10 passengers per trip, most traffic being day trippers to Chicago to sightsee. Passenger numbers sometimes amassed as high as 30 or so, especially during the Chicago air and auto shows. One conductor reported a whopping 54 passengers on one trip. Wisconsin and Southern had greatly encouraged Amtrak to get the Lake Country Limited running, based on a consultant's claim of potentially 150 express freight customers between Madison, Wisconsin and Chicago, Illinois. Amtrak, meanwhile, also envisioned carrying auto parts from Janesville all the way to Michigan, but as the train's career got further underway, problems soon began to arrive. Issues were seen as early as the train's planning stages. Initially, the Lake Country Limited was planned to connect with a train called the Skyline Connection, a mixed train running between Chicago, Illinois and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Due to breakdowns in talks with Amtrak and Norfolk Southern, along with a lack of proper equipment, the train never materialized. At the time, 
Freight railroads like CSX, NS, and BNSF were getting tired of Amtrak's increasing interest in mail and express freight business, which in turn would subtract business from them who were fully equipped to haul what Amtrak wanted to. In fact, BNSF restricted Amtrak to five express freight cars on their trains while on BNSF trackage. Another problem was Wisconsin and Southern's poor quality trackage. This limited the train to 30 miles an hour between Fox Lake and Janesville, a very distinct drop compared to the maximum of 70 miles an hour on Metro's tracks. Additionally, express freight from the General Motors plant in Janesville never really came to be. The biggest issue though was just a general lack of any significant freight traffic which was meant to be the bread and butter of the service. The Lake Country Limited's early morning, late evening schedule also made passenger travel relatively awkward or inconvenient, so passenger numbers maintained a slim to none report. The only thing keeping the train running was local mail transport, small amounts of passengers, paper from Janesville, and road railers filled with Frisky's cat food from a Nestle Purina pet food plant in Jefferson, Wisconsin. Even still, some locals and city officials remain relatively optimistic about the train's potential, seeing as there hadn't been passenger rail service in the area since the Milwaukee Road's Sioux and Varsity Streamliner trains in 1971. On the flip side though, not everyone was too enthused or interested about the Lake Country train in general. Wisconsin and Southern maintained enthusiasm though, as in June 2000, they planned a three to five million dollar track upgrade project to elevate speeds of the Lake Country Limited to 60 miles an hour. But as the winter of 2000 to 2001 rolled in, Amtrak had to cancel the train between December 27, 2000 and February 2nd of 2001 due to weather-related equipment shortages. Referring back to the track upgrade plan, it was too late for Amtrak as they cut service to Saturdays only on March 24th, 2001 as any freight or passenger traffic began to falter. Due to a six-month cancellation notice requirement, Amtrak then announced the service would cease operations on September 23, 2001. Then, as 2001 transitioned into summer, the train was mostly hauling air, in other words, nothing, in a single horizon passenger car. As was expected, service did end that September, passing by a Sioux Line 1003 excursion in its wake. Amtrak Dash 8 number 511 and NPCU number 90219 provided power for the last run. The train unceremoniously had a legacy of being nicknamed the Janesville Joke and ironically, the Zenda Zephyr. At the very least though, the train did have more affectionate nicknames such as the Janesville Javelin and Heifer Zephyr for running through America's Dairyland. Some say if the train had been extended to other cities or had a proper connecting train, things might have gone better. Others say it would have been better if the train had never existed at all. Ultimately though, the service only lasted about one year and five months. An unfortunate, but unsurprising end to one of Amtrak's more unique and niche routes, the Lake Country Limited. <laughs>